hey everybody. Ian Torch here. Just a guy working for a while. Once again, we're playing Dream Daddy and Dad Dating Simulator. Do I have any mini games yet? Oh, cool! Alright, cool. That's actually. I want to see if I can break my record on the gargoyle. Welcome. You've got dads. <laughs> Still, you've got dads. Alright. Let me see how Master Damien is doing. The funny thing is, a lot of these dad tips are dad tips. <laughs> A lot of fun hanging out with Damien the other day. I wonder what he's up to. I open up Dad book and start writing him a message when Amanda walks in the door. Dad, you got a letter. Oh, is it from Grandma? Hmm, no, it's from Damien. Whoa, uh, can I see it? Amanda hands me a piece of old parchment folded into an envelope and sealed with purple wax. Damn, the dude goes all out. I pry off the seal and unfold the letter. In the most beautiful calligraphy, the letter reads, Dearest Ian, I hope you'll find my continued correspondence endearing rather than trying. One can only hope that my use of the slower, more traditional form of communication will showcase my sincere and honest sentiment that I greatly enjoyed our time together. Write this hastily under the warm embrace of excitement, fearful that I may misstep and speak toward something unwelcome. For now, I hope that you might forgive my boldness. I will simply say that your company was greatly, has greatly occupied my thoughts. While the afternoon may have been derailed by forces unforeseen, your companionship helped a great deal, not only in the discipline of my child, but in the morale of my spirit. And for that, I thank you, said Ian, if you'll allow me. It would mean the world to me if you could enjoy more of your, if I could enjoy more of your time. Perhaps a trip to the cinema, followed by a moonlit stroll would be your taste. I eagerly await your response. With great respect, indeed, beloved March. Amanda and I both look up from the letter. Mm. Wow. Oh, he's good. Mm. So you want to catch a movie with him? Yeah, I, I better message him on dad book and let him know. Amanda slaps my laptop shut. What? You have to write him back. A real letter. But my handwriting looks like two toddlers fighting over a crayon. Yes. Dad, you have to. He wrote you a letter. That's so cool. Will you help me? I need to class this up. Mm -hmm. Father, I was made for this. Here's what you do. Hmm. I fucking love my kid. Find tickets to a show that you two will like. Then enclose them in the letter. Oh, that's classy. <laughs> Amanda and I hop onto my laptop and pursue showtimes. He doesn't seem to like romantic comedy kind of guy. Hey. Oh, here's one. Vampire Crusade 2? <laughs> Evil never dies. I don't know, that sounds kind of stupid. Actually, it's a critically acclaimed exploration into the un ennui of existence. It really turns the vampire trope on its head. Really? Hmm. Nah, there's just lots of blood and vampire titties. Well, let's roll the dice. Huh. 
I purchase the tickets and print them out, then sit down at the table with Amanda and try drafting a nice letter. I start writing. Damien. I do hope this letter finds you in good health. Hey. Good morrow to you on this fine eve. Huh. Not sure if that checks out, but it looks fine to me. What's next? Hey, remember when your son tried to cask of Montiato that kid? You've been good? I must confess my amateur control of the written word. Hmm. Well, geez, Dad, have some faith in yourself. Huh? Okay, we're trekking along. Let him know how you're feeling. You find me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. I did very much enjoy the adventure we found ourselves on the last we met. That earnest shit was pretty messed up. Hmm. You find me in good spirits. I did very much enjoy it. Hmm. Not bad. Good action-y sentence. <laughs> Ask him to hang out already. True art takes time, Amanda. On a strange turn of events, I found myself enamored of the situation at hand. Like Brueghel's landscape of the fall of Icarus, I find myself lost in your details. Let me, um, get at that. Dad, whoa. I saw it on TV. I'm not an actually intelligent person. Bring it home, Pops. Let me take you out. I got two tickets to the movies. I would very much enjoy your company. Accompanying me to the cinema? It would bring me great pleasure to escort you to the cinema. Saved it there at the end. I'm sure he'll appreciate your thoroughness. Enclosed, you'll find two tickets to the Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you will find both titillating and enjoyable. Best wishes. Hard daps. Namaste. We'll carry on. See, best wishes seems like I'm... Sending him on his way. Hard daps. Yeah, that's out. Namaste doesn't seem very Victorian. I mean, it's a it's a well-meaning phrase, but we'll carry on. And then I sign my name, my full name, fancier that way. Ian Torchetti. Yeah. Is this okay? Amanda reads over my sloppy handwriting. Damien, good morrow to you on this fine eve. I must confess of my amateur control of the written word, as well as my even more amateur penmanship. I did very much enjoy the adventure we found ourselves on the last we met. Like Brueghel's landscape with the fall of Icarus, I find myself lost in your details. I would very much enjoy your company, accompanying me to the cinema. In close, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you will find both titillating and enjoyable. We'll carry on. Ian Torchetti. Hmm? You spelled his name wrong. What? Huh? <laughs> nah, just trying to keep you on your toes. <laughs> Now all you have to do is seal it and put it in his mailbox. Can I seal it with tape? 
That's not authentic enough. I have an idea. I'll be right back. Amanda leaves the room and returns with a candle, a lighter, a small piece of wood. Ah. You gotta have a wax seal. She lights the candle, which starts to burn down and form a pool of melted wax. What's that other thing? Mm -hmm. Amanda pours some of the wax onto the folded letter and expertly presses a small piece of wood into it. She lets it dry for a second and pulls the wood away, revealing... <laughs> Here it is, your sigil. A little kitten with a bow on its head. Awesome! <laughs> Scrapbooking stuff always comes in the clutch. I guess all there is to do is to deliver it to his doorstep. Huh. Hmm. Oh, I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do it. Hmm. I already called my guy. Hmm. I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has the good pigeons. <laughs> Don't get your pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. I don't want to know if any of this is true. Wouldn't that be funny if, like, Xennials started doing carrier pigeon just, like, just to stick it? Like, we're so original. It'd be hilarious. Come on, Xennials. Put over the carrier pigeon. Make yourselves actually unique. I head outside and walk over to Damien's house. I slip the letter into the slot in his door and go back home. Hmm. Mission accomplished. Now we play the waiting game. The night finally rolls around where I'm supposed to meet with Damien. The next day he had left another beautifully crafted letter thanking me for mine and agreeing to the evening. Amanda helps me pick out a nice outfit and I show up to the theater a little bit early. It's a chilly night and the theater is kind of crowded. But it's still nice, hence the change of appearance. How do you do? I jump at the sound of his voice and turn around to see Damien right behind me. You almost gave me a heart attack. How long were you there for? Ah! I don't know, I just woke up. My apologies for frightening you. Was that thunder? Is it going to rain soon? Hmm. I didn't hear anything. What? Mm. Ah! What? Mm. Regardless, the hour grows close. Ah. Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing our tickets. Ah. Please, allow me to repay the deed in Sour Patch Kids, or perhaps Milk Duds? You had me at Sour Patch Kids. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. We get in line and buy snacks. As we're waiting, I hear a familiar voice behind us. Oh, my dad's here. I turn around to find Lucian standing a few feet behind us with a gaggle of other goth kids. Uh. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad to see you spending some quality time with your friends. Whatever, dad. <laughs> and what movie will you be attending tonight? My friends are making me see some kids movie about talking animals. I don't really care about it. Uh. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be watching Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. Oh my! You? Watching that? Yeah, I thought Damien would enjoy it. Hmm. <laughs> Good luck with that, Dad. Lucian rejoins his friends and I look over to Damien. Good luck with what? Hmm. It's nothing. My son loves to tease. We wait in line for a little longer and Damien buys us snacks. He seems a little nervous. I wonder what's wrong. Hmm. Damien and I take our seats and settle in for previews. Glancing at him, I can see that he's sweating profusely and gripping his armrest. Is everything okay? Vampires, huh? The movie hasn't started yet. 
Hmm? Is everything okay? Everything's perfectly fine. Huh. I'm so excited for this film. I'm a devoted patron of the arts, especially the scary arts. The scarier the art, the better. Do you have a favorite horror movie? Hmm. I, of course I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is Halloween Town. Terrifying. Oh, interesting. Huh. That's odd. I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I would have expected him to bring up some sort of strange foreign horror film that I'd never heard of. Damien's knuckles are turning white. Looks like he's about to rip the armrest off. Wait a second. Damien? Are you afraid of horror movies? Ah! You must be joking. I love horror movies. The lights dim for the film. Ah! Damien screams. I apologize. I was thinking about something far scarier than this movie. Which is not scary at all. We settle in as the film starts. I offer Damien some licorice and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands are shaking. Ah! The title flashes across the screen in bloody letters. Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. Hmm. A pale man with long, silver hair, glittering red eyes, and, well, oiled abs sits up in a coffin. Awaken my coven. Two more vampires slide the tops of their stone coffins onto the floor. Is it time? Yeah, yes, husband, but also mortal enemy. It is time. The three look at each other and then to the camera. For the Vampire Crusade. This rules. The trio of vampires fly off into the night as foreboding organ music plays in the distance. I somehow get lost in the movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually a pretty fun flick. Ah! We get to a tense moment of the movie where Romulus Trueblood sits at a truce meeting with the general of the human army, whose wife Romulus has fallen in love with. Romulus, it is good to finally meet you. General, I agree. It is fine. It is good to finally... Blood you! Oh, Romulus leaps out and slashes the general's throat. Blood splatters over everything, including the camera. Ah! Damien screams again, reflexively grasping my hand. I immediately blush, forgetting about any vampires or blood or vampiric blood. What? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Hmm. Damien retracts his hand and places it back in his lap. Huh. I was writing a novel in my head about blood magic and I got an extremely scary section. Damien goes back to quietly stressing out over the movie. It's kind of cute that he won't admit he's afraid of it. I wish he would hold my hand again. Maybe I could do something to try and make him feel more comfortable. I've got it. I'll do what all dads do best. Talk during the movie! Tell a dad joke, point out a plot hole, ask what's happening. Well, I mean, he's barely able to pay attention, so probably wouldn't know what's happening. Although I'd love to hear his bullshit excuse. My dad and I usually po pointed out plot holes after the movie. I guess tell a dad joke? Where does a dog go when it loses its tail? What? Uh, where? To the retail store. I yell the last bit a little too loud for a crowded movie theater, but I can see a smile form on Damien's face. <laughs> Good one, Ian. Hmm. The rest of the movie goes by relatively smoothly, with only a few whimpers from Damien. 
maybe he would have loved the romantic comedy better. We get to the final scene of the movie where Romulus, bad blood, and the general's wife embrace each other in his crypt. It appears that the true vampire crusade was the vampire crusade in our hearts. Our cold, unbeating hearts. Romulus and the general's wife begin making out hard. What? The film fades to black and the end appears on the screen. But then it hard cuts to Demetrius and his rival lover, Carmela, who watch the two from afar. Hmm. Oh no, the twist ending. Our bloodline has been pure for a thousand years. Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It will only be a short time before the next Vampire Crusade 3 evil must die again. More thunder, more ominous organs. The movie fades out again and a bloody question mark now accompanies the end. Damien and I walk out of the movie theater amidst throngs of chattering moviegoers. He's a little more pale than I remember, but otherwise he survived the encounter. He seems kind of invigorated. Oh. What an interesting film. While the premise admittedly struck me as pedestrian, I was intrigued by its harrowing love story and great attention to detail in regards to vampiric lore. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot more vampire titties than I thought there would be. <laughs> Come, the night is young. Let's take a stroll. Hmm. Damien is making a point of not telling me where he's taking me. Still, I'm enjoying the walk. And the cool night air. Being alone here with Damien is a lot better than being in a crowded theater. Lovely night, isn't it? Hmm. As lovely as the company, yes. Hmm. He thinks I'm lovely. Damn. Okay, here comes the smooth response. Thanks. Cool. Okay. <laughs> nice. Ah. Crushed it. We both stand there feeling a little awkward. I'm sure... I sure am one smooth operator. Are you getting a little hungry? We could... Maybe stop off, grab something to eat? Oh. Worry not, friend. I have a plan. We turn the corner and are greeted by the gates of a cemetery. What? Are we going in there? Oh. A little bit of a Victorian flavor, Ian. Trust me. I'm a bit nervous. Damien hasn't led me wrong yet. I follow his lead and we walk into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us as we follow a path through the faded tombstones. As we crest a small hill, we get a beautiful view of the city. The night lights sparkle around us. I gotta hand it to him. For being in a cemetery, this is strangely romantic. Picnicking in graveyards is an old Victorian tradition an appropriate finish to an evening after a vampire movie, wouldn't you say? With a flourish, Damien produces a blanket and a picnic basket. Wait, where were you hiding that? Huh. Hmm. Under my cloak. Oh, right. <laughs> Damien unfolds the blanket and both sit down, gazing out at the city lights. This is a bottle of red wine and a fine selection of cheeses. Ugh. In the Victorian era, there were no public art galleries, parks, or botanical gardens to speak of. Once royal graveyards became a more popular alternative to church burials, they became the only place that people could see beautiful plant life and fine sculptures. That makes sense. This is pretty nice. I have a question, though. How are you so okay with being in a graveyard, but you had trouble handling a scary movie? What? 
I... I wasn't. He sighs deeply. Okay, yes, I was extremely scared of that. I was not writing a book about blood magic in my head. I just... I've never been good at those. I just feel as if, because of how I look and act, people expect me to love horror movies, so I must play the part. Truth be told, I don't know if I have the constitution for them at times. Damn it, I'm so sorry. If I had known, I would have suggested another movie. <laughs> it's quite alright. I actually did find myself enjoying this one. Thanks to your help. Ugh. Graveyards, however. I think there's something rather beautiful about the death. Cemeteries are traditionally built away from cities, away from the realm of the living, and it keeps us rather separated from it. Ah. To acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think, gives us a certain intimate knowledge of ourselves. Huh. To sit amongst generations of those who came before us, to be truly alive in the midst of so much death, brings me great comfort. Death helps me appreciate life. To savor every second. I sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. Never thought I'd be comfortable sitting alone in a graveyard at night. I actually feel very peaceful. Suddenly it doesn't seem like we're alone. Off in the distance I see a shadowy figure in the trees. What? What is that? Ah. I'm not sure. Hmm. It noticed us. I'm paralyzed with fears it begins lumbering towards us. Its shape taking on more animal form. More feral. I look to Damien for help, but he's just as afraid and transfixed as I am. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature is getting closer. Moving faster. Ah! Move! Huh. Oh, huh. it's a dog. As it finally comes into the light, the friendliest, dumbest little Boston Terrier I've ever seen pulls its owner towards us. Iggy? Is that you? Did you bring Jojo? Oh. The dog trots over to Damien and sniffs at his hands. Damien looks ecstatic. He ruffles the dog's fur happily. Oh. What a beautiful dog. Hey! We both look up, not expecting to see. Hey, thanks. It's Robert. Oh. Robert, what are you doing out here on this lovely evening? Huh. Hunting cryptids. Huh. What? Mm. What? Mm. I didn't know you had a dog. <clears throat> oh, this isn't my dog. Mm. I found her wandering in the street. I put a leash on her and now we're walking around this graveyard together. Mm. Hunting cryptids. Ah. Damien and I share a look. Wait, I do know he has a dog because of the fighting... Oh, that must have been an optional conversation. Huh. Oh. Damien and I share a look. May I give her a treat? May I give her a treat? Mm. Sure. We can give her cheese, though. I... Not to worry. Damien reaches into the depths of his cloak and procures a small dog treat. What else is he keeping in there? Do you have a bag of holding, Damien? Did you roll a natural 20? The dog laps up the treat and crunches away, tail wagging furiously. Damien continues to smooth down her fur. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Oh. My absolute pleasure. Damien shakes the dog's paw. Aw. Oh. Lovely to meet you, my friend. May our paths cross again. Robert and his dog disappear into the darkness again. Damien stares after them. I didn't know you liked dogs. Huh. 
Victorians loved dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be accompanied by a small dog, such as a terrier or a Maltese. I, uh, I think big dogs are nice, too. Yeah, man, dogs are cool. Uh. I do believe we've had enough excitement for one night. Let's say we make our way home. Damien hops to his feet and extends a hand to help me up. I gladly take it as my knees aren't what they used to be. He packs up his picnic basket and leads us to the graveyard. Uh, leads us out of the graveyard. As we begin to walk home, I take one last look at the cemetery. It really is beautiful. Uh. Like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. <laughs> Thank you, ever so kind, for your company tonight. Damien, it was my pleasure. Oh. And if you'll allow me, it would bring me great joy to offer you a token of my affection. Damien reaches into his cloak and pulls out a folded monogram handkerchief. He presses it into my hand. Wow. Thank you, Damien. I'm going to use this to dry my tears for those I've lost. I can't wait to sneeze on this. I'm going to wave it at past. <laughs> I'm gonna wave this at passing ships. Hmm. A noble purpose. Wait, okay. That eggplant keeps popping up. Is there like a? Are there sex mini games in in this? Like. Am I gonna have to edit this with bunny footage at some point? Do, are we gonna be exchanging strong purple guys later? Huh. Damien shuffles his feet. <laughs> I, I just wanna say that it's rare to find someone like you. Someone who's open to my eccentricities. Ugh. It's nice to feel so accepted. Thank you. Damien gives my hand a quick squeeze. Damien blushes and hastily retracts his hand. Oh. I must take my leave. Good night. Before I can say anything else, he's gone. Huh. I unlock the door and step inside. Hey. Like a whirlwind, Amanda runs from the window and plops down on the couch, trying to look nonchalant. Hmm. Hey, Dad. What's up? Were you... watching me from the window? Ah. Uh. No, I was just... Uh... Hmm. Okay, yes. How was the movie? Lots of vampire titties. Yeah. Told you. But as it turns out, Damien is. Oh. Wait, Amanda doesn't need to know that. I'll keep it between me and Damien. S scary cool. Yeah, but he's so cool, it's scary. Nice save, Ian. Did you know that graveyards used to be a place to throw parties? Huh. I think I'm misremembering that. Hmm? Wow, that's pretty punk. Also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it was a werewolf for a minute, though. Yeah. How can you be so sure it wasn't a werewolf? How can you be so sure that I'm not a werewolf? And how can I be so sure you're not a werewolf? Hmm. Amanda's eyes narrow. Huh. I don't trust you. Nor I you. Hm. We make intense, wary eye contact for a second. Hm. Anyway, I'm calling it for the night. Don't stay up too late, will you? I'll try not to howl the moon past midnight. If you're parking uphill, be sure to turn your tires toward the street. Number one dead. Handy. Fang, goth, vampire, horror. Wow, 
My stars, this... Never in a million moons have I had a date such as exquisite as this one. Oh my. The... Okay. I... All right. Cool. I do good. Scored me some daddy points there. Well, it's been a long day. That it has, so... Gonna call it in now. That was quite the date. But if you like how I'm racking up them daddy points, just remember to like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell to stay notified. And, uh... Why don't you leave a comment about your ideal date? Both the limitless, you know, if you had all the power in the world to have the ultimate date, what would it be? And then pull that back a little bit to your actual ideal date, like your current situation, what would your ideal date be? Yes, like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell to stay notified. And as always, I'm me and Torch. I'm just a guy looking for love. Ha 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 ha.